Bye. Dice, welcome back to the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast, mate. Um, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on. How are you? DK, thanks, brother. Thanks for having me back on. Um, traveling really well, just uh, cruising down at uh, Inverloch, down in Gippsland in the country, so good to spend a bit of time back here. Yeah, for sure. So a few weeks, mate, since the season's wrapped up. Obviously, um, I'd love to have a chat at some point today about, um, you know, what's gone into the year. It's a fucking very different year than usual, um, obviously. But since the season's wrapped up, how's it? What's, what's the feeling in terms of, um, you know, as I've said, the year's been quite different. But how do you feel about how the season's gone, you know, about, um, I guess, the next couple of months and then um, and what's ahead? And obviously, throw in the mix as well. You've, you've had an operation recently, so recovery's um, on, on your mind as well. So what's the feeling at the moment? No doubt. Yeah, look, it's um, in a really good space right now at the moment. Um, it's been a, no, it's been an extremely challenging year. Um, not only personally, uh, as a team, with all the challenges that were thrown in there with COVID, et cetera, but um, probably didn't have the outcomes we would have liked on the field as well, which yep. um, with that in itself, um, being in a leadership position, you, you cop a lot of scrutiny and not being able to play and be on the field with the boys, it, it makes it um, even more challenging again. But um, you know, sort of reflecting on the year, uh, it, it, it went through a number of phases. Started mm. out, um, you know, pre-season last year, really exciting, uh, great energy around the place. Um, brought in a, a few tweaks to our game plan and um, we were starting to see them come out really well throughout the pre-season and early season form. And then, um, yeah, I guess uh, it all sort of went through that whirlwind of the, the period that we had off. Um, came back, got my, my, my body right, managed to play one game against the Swans up there. Um, two, two days later, main training at, uh, during the week, fractured my fibula. Um, so I went through more challenges there. Um, Was that just a stressy or what, how did that happen? Yeah, I, I, got, uh, I actually got wrapped up in a tackle um, just in some stoppage work. And yeah. uh, Dars Paris just nailed me and ended up yeah, cracking <laughs> the base of my fibula. So... Um, you know, it sort of just went from a, um, a foot stress fracture last he, year. He should have been um, dropped the next week. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's out to get me. Took me yeah. spot. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, look, I think this last five months, a lot of challenges with injury. Mm. I've had quite a good run throughout my career. And uh, this, this sort of 12 months, I've just copped it. But um, anyway, looking back at the year, a lot of challenges, but a hell of a lot of learning to go with it. Um, I think that the team, uh, the environment, um, we did as best we possibly could to cope with the, the hub life. Um, yep. but, uh, results just didn't go our way and, and that's disappointing, but still got an enormous amount of optimism and belief on uh, where the club stands, the people that are in there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, particularly the, the young group of players that we can uh, build off coming forward. Definitely. So where does, um, you know, end of the season, particularly not knowing exactly what next year is going to be like either, because I mean, obviously Victoria, it's looking like we're about to come out of lockdown, hopefully, but you just never know because there is no vaccination for this bloody thing. And um, things could go south quite quickly in other states as well. So even now there's no real certainty as to what next year looks like season wise. Um, So for you, you know, looking at planning the next kind of few months ahead and then moving into 2021, obviously wanting to get a little bit of redemption, not only for the team, but physically, uh, personally as well, to, to come back and have a good year and stuff. How do you actually plan for that? Like, are you just taking some time now to kind of debrief the year that's just been and, and work on yourself physically and then just see what happens? Or have you guys kind of got anything in mind about when you'll actually be able to come back and do pre-season and, and stuff like that moving forward? clarity on to back mid December. Um so they'll get a two or three week block leading into Christmas. Sorry, just the, missed, that, the old, missed that first bit there, Dice. Sorry mate. Yeah, so the the younger players, so yep. those first of four year boys, yep. um they're back early to mid December. So they'll get a few weeks um to crank up leading into Christmas. Mm-hmm. And then the older players, I'm, I'm one of the veterans now mate. Um I'll be back uh officially back um around the eleventh of January. So that's when our pre season okay. campaigns will kick off. Um yep. So in terms of um, planning, is that, for that in I Melbourne think, at the moment? Is that obviously planning to be in Melbourne? Yeah, that's a, that's the case at this stage. So hoping that things will be able to open up and we'll be able to commence pre-season at the club mm. as usual. Yeah, um, be a few little restrictions, but we'll, yeah. we'll just play that one by year. But really, we're just preparing as best we possibly can 
Um, not focusing too much on that exter external stuff because we can't control that. Um, just prep ourselves as best we possibly can for a strong pre-season. And um, yeah, as you said, that's where my mind's at. Um, certainly um, feel like I can come into my best footy of my career and um, ideally just get my, my body in a really healthy space leading into pre-season so I can put in a uh, bank a good block of work leading into the season. Yeah, it's funny. Like people I've had on the, on the show in the past you know, what, six to eight months now, um, some of the, a lot of the, the questions that I've asked them have, have revolved around being able to adapt and how quickly you can adapt. And those that can adapt the quickest are usually the ones that um, come out on top and, and, and make the most of the current period, regardless of whether it it's going the way you want it to or not. So how did you find that um, personally? And then also on a, a club or team level as well, you guys were able to adapt to the conditions this year and things being just so different to usual. Um, but, you know, in the end of the day, the rest, the rest of the league's in the same, same boat. So it just needs to, you just need to get on with the job and, and, and adapt as quick as possible. So how did you find that? Yeah, 100%. Um, I think uh, I'll, I'll more so speak broadly as a team as I didn't get enough opportunity to, to play. But um, in terms of going into the hub type scenario, um, look, I feel we adapted really well to the changes in the, the length of games, particularly early in the season. Yep. Um, this is prior to going into the hubs. We won our you know, first few games on the trot. We didn't lose a game in the preseason comp. Um, but I think as we, as we progressed and went into the, the hubs, um, you know, our form started to, to lose traction. Um, being implementing a new game plan as well, that yep. lack of continuity with training, we weren't allowed to have any contact at training. Um, so in, in, yeah. in regards, we couldn't train like we usually would to prepare uh, to try and learn a new game style and implement things yeah. on the track for games. It's kind of like you're nearly going in, you're not going in blind, but you're going in a little bit underdone in terms of the way uh, we want to play and perform and be really in sync and connected as a group. Yeah. So Kind of done um, the theory, but haven't been able to put it into practice. Just like know it yeah. on paper, but there's nothing yep. you know, done in person, yeah. 100%. And, and as you see, the teams that have been together for a number of years um, that are you know mature groups, Geelong, Richmond, we're seeing them in the grand finals, yep. but your West Coast, um, you know, other, other teams that were in the top eight, Port Adelaide for a number of years now that have cemented systems and uh, mature players in their group. Um, they were the ones that stood out uh, throughout this COVID period. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's really, um, I think if things were, were normal, it certainly would have been a different caper for us, I feel. Okay. As we were yep. growing, we're learning a hell of a lot. But yep. um, look, as I say, I feel we adapted as best we possibly could. Yeah. Um, really proud of the way the group handled it and the, the broader club as well. Um, and yeah, look, I, I think coming out of it, we've got an extremely tight group of players. Um, you know, you spend a lot of time with guys mm. that you yep. probably necessarily wouldn't have hung out with every day back in Melbourne. Almost like um, a pre-season camp for the whole year. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent, an extended one, which yeah, you know, certainly had its challenges because you yeah. know we, we want to be around um, the boys, you know, twenty-four-seven. <laughs> yeah, um, look, it certainly built some really especially strong when you, when one of them breaks your bloody leg. <laughs> <laughs> true, true nah. all sweet. Dash is a gun. He had an awesome year, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, look, some some real positives to come from the year, mate. And yeah, um, said, couldn't be prouder of the group, and it'll hold us in really good stead going forward. Fantastic. And you mentioned before the change of game plan. How significant was that change? Was it literally just a, a, almost a, a full 180, like a big backflip of a change in terms of what the game plan you guys wanted to implement initially? Or was it just kind of slight tweaks due to the, the change in quarter length, as you've mentioned? Yeah, no, it certainly wasn't a full backflip. Um, just a few different tweaks to uh, both our attack and our, um, and our defense. So yep. that came... Um, Really uh, due to um, Blake Carousella coming across from Richmond. Yep. Spent a lot of time with Ben Rutten there. So with those two really at the helm um, under the guidance of, of Wusha this year as a mentor role for truck, I think that played out really well. So um, I think we, you know, we have a lot of belief in what they're trying to implement. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's about spending that time training properly and really buying into that direction we're heading. What was the feedback from the boys? And obviously you're still playing a handful of games yourself, but... The feedback from the boys in terms of the shorter quarters, like, um, you know, fitness-wise anyway, like was the running, like the running capacity and stuff, how different was the the physicality of the games compared to the longer quarters, if any? Yeah, sure. I think I think the main one was um, it probably if you didn't get a good start, it, it made it very hard to get yourself back in the game because you don't have that sort of extra 10 minutes to 
grind your way through yep. you know, a period, arrest that momentum, yeah. and then you know, become within reach, sort of leading into quarters yep. and half time. But um, I think uh, really the, the reduced periods, guys were recovering, no worries. So we could show that you could back up after four or five days, four or five day breaks. Yeah. Um, and guys felt really good, pretty fresh, ready to go. So um, it definitely had a big impact there. Um, but, you know, I think particularly for the guys that, um, you know, work themselves and find they have really good back end of quarters, which I was one of them, um, you know, my previous years, find I get work into the games towards the back end when guys fatigue. Yeah. Um, probably and you didn't get that time to do that. So um, you needed to be switched on from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah, buddy oath. With the, um, obviously, with the, the varied kind of um, time, of, like a time, sorry, days between games, um, that throws off the recovery quite a bit as well. And, you know, you've got teams that are kind of, um, you know, your living restrictions are different. Travel restri- the travel is a lot different than usual as well. So recovery-wise, did the club have to put a pretty big emphasis on, on recovery um, techniques? And, and, and was that a more of a focus than usual? Or was it pretty similar? You just kind of went, went with what you would usually go with with that approach? Yeah, no doubt. It was a heavy, heavily based around recovery post game. Yeah. Um, you know, we really only got one chance to have a decent kick of the footy leading into the next game because it's you know turnaround is so quick. So we did have a uh, brilliant facilities um, uh, right throughout in terms uh, we had, when we're on the Gold Coast and then down in um, on the Sunshine Coast as well. The universities down there opened their doors to us, and um, we had a, a strength a, training and stuff there. Exactly, yeah. yeah. A Riggs recovery facility um, on the Goldie. Shout out to that crew for letting us uh, rip through that one. They were unbelievable. <laughs> they had the works with cryotherapy, saunas, yeah. hot holds, uh, Norma Tech boots, massage guns, the Wait. works. So um, we had awesome facilities. And yeah, as you say, heavy base on recovery so you could get ready to fire up again. Inside the hub, like just, just um, so those that are listening or watching can get a better idea of like what they're, what it was actually like. So how many at, at one time, how many teams would be in that hub? Yeah, Easily. so, well, at the, the back end of it for our last probably month, we were, uh, we were staying with Collingwood, Melbourne, uh, and the Melbourne Storm as well. So we had, we had four, oh, right. you know, we had four teams in the one crew in, in one resort, really. So you're mingling and mixing with a whole different bunch of blokes. Yeah. Um, and then we we're on the Gold Coast, the Royal Pines there. Uh, we were set up camp there for probably 12, 10, 12 weeks and uh, a bit of a revolving door of um, the other teams that were coming with us. We had the Dogs, Carlton, um, players and partners from uh, where we had Hawthorne, GWS. So we had a, a lot of crew coming through that one as well. In fact, that'd be pretty weird. It'd be quite different. Yeah, no doubt. No, very strange. But also I found it, you know, it was quite refreshing um, getting to know other boys from other clubs as well. Yeah. And, Yep. You know, you find you're going through very similar stuff in terms of yep. physically, emotionally, um, similar issues amongst the, the teams and things like that. So um, you sort of felt like you weren't alone with it all, which is good. Yeah, I can imagine from like looking from the outside in, it'd be, you know, like most guys I talk to that are, that are in the league, like after a game, whether it's a win or a loss, you kind of go out and, you know, someone like yourself, you head down to the beach and, take it pretty easy or go and have a coffee at your local cafe and just switch off from footy for a day or or whatever and then reset and then go again the next week but when you're stuck in that same joint and it's, it'd be pretty hard to escape from footy when that's all i mean you know there's chances for you guys to do normal shit inside the hub i guess but like it'd be it'd be hard to switch off when you're surrounded by it 24 7 the whole year whole season 100 percent, and that was probably the most challenging part about it and we tried to make a really poignant effort on making sure guys get their own space and mm-hmm. not being in each other's pockets the whole time. So, you know, when you're on, when you're in meetings, when you're training, you're sharp and you're there and you're with it. But when you have your downtime, make sure you do really switch off, relax, try and get time to yourself. And part of that, a big one for me, was just a you know really strong morning routine and yeah, getting, cool. up, getting up nice and early. Um, we, had all, we all had cars there so we could access vehicles. So yep. I'd get up early, you know, do a bit of yoga and uh, meditation and then, drive myself down to the beach, have a bit of a dip, get myself my coffee. And then, you know, that's me. That's I've had my time for the day. Yep. And then you're into your first meeting or, or training session from there. So I think that was yeah. crucial for me. Yeah. Just getting a bit of time for myself um, before your, your first commitment for the day. 
Yeah, I can imagine as well, like a lot of maybe a number of the boys that probably didn't have that form of routine or anything where they were taking care of the headspace or, you know, mindset type of stuff probably had that time to really narrow in on, on putting together some form of routine like that or, or found it necessary to even to get through the year. Was that the case? Yeah. Like, were you, did you find like, even, even as a team where were you guys trying to put that emphasis around the mental health side of things and, and mindset? Yeah, for sure. So mental health side of things was a, a big focus right yeah. throughout. Um, we had a number of sessions where it was really just checking in with each other. Yeah. Um, you know, just offloading anything that was on your mind and helping mm-hmm. each other through that period. Um, and I think the good thing was it was we had a, uh, probably a, a number of guys that uh, were more willing to to open up and speak about it because you'd built that relationship and connection over that time together. Yeah. That you just trusted anything you said. It was you were there to listen and let it yep. let like, and help them guide them through it. So, um, but yeah, absolutely. We we try to make a big effort on you know getting time for yourself, implementing some form of you know morning routine. Yeah. Um, things like that. So yeah, I think that that'll be a big positive for a lot of the group. Yeah, I mean, although obviously far from ideal, like even like particularly for the younger guys, like the rookies and stuff, it's an experience that most wouldn't get, like, you know, getting to spend or having to, but having to or getting to, whichever way you look at it, um, to spend time with, you know, particularly like the senior players and everyone in the team and actually gel with everyone instead of, you know, um, you know, sticking to your, your small group that you're hanging out with at training usually or, or outside of footy, outside of being at the club, like, It'd be a good way for especially the older guys to get to know everyone that's come into the club as well. Like, I mean, the younger players would have taken a lot away from that, for sure. Yeah, no doubt. I think looking back now, if that was my first year, obviously not ideal, but if I could go on a bloody holiday with the whole team and get away from, you know, the the bubble of Melbourne, um, yeah, I would have absolutely loved it, spending your whole yeah. time there when you're just frothing footy when you're 18 and, you know, <laughs> being submerged in at 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, our young guys, Ned Carl, Nick Bryan, uh, Lockie Johnson, um, Jones. Yeah, we had a number of you know, first-year players. They were just lapping it up. And they, they, were, you know, they were the most energetic guys the whole time. So yeah. it, was, it was really refreshing, actually, spending a lot of time with those boys, too. Yeah. Um, that, that also helped you. Just seeing their passion from, and stuff around, oh, the, around everything. Yeah. Yeah, that was energizing um, for us older guys, which was key. Like, yeah, that's awesome, mate. What's the timeline looking like for you at the moment with the boot and, um, and getting out of that and then getting stuck back into some form of um, physical prep leading into preseason? Yeah, oh, the boot. Well, the, the boot here. I'm hoping I can fuck this thing off on Monday. <laughs> I'm going to get scans with that. Um, I've, been, I've spent way too much time over the last 18 months in that sucker, but yeah. Um, <laughs> It's, it's healing healing really well so yeah um mate you may as well just yeah, get so one for the other leg and just walk around in both of them all the time <laughs> <laughs> we were talking oh, we were talking the other day about you your hip on your opposite yeah. side when you move just yeah. fucking everything, she does everything that. Season, um, hopefully get off it this week which would be nice yeah awesome and then um still give yourself a little bit longer to to just switch off and, and physically and mentally before you get back into your own type of movement and stuff before preseason or what's the what's the go there yeah absolutely Obviously there's no, so, no chance for travel and shit like that but are you planning on what like what's the what's the next couple of months looking like for you i think ideally i'd love to spend a, a, a fair chunk of time down here in Inverloch. i haven't probably spent a, a good chunk of time since i got drafted to spend a hell of a lot in the city or then i'd go yep. away overseas or whatever in the off season yeah. so Really just got a lot of my mates have shifted back here too due to COVID. Yep. Um, so we've got a good crew down here. Um, and yeah, so spend a fair bit of time down down this way. And then, um, yeah, just getting my, my body really healthy and, you know, set myself some new goals leading into cool. pre-season before we crank up and away we go. Shit, yeah. Now talk us through this backyard gym, mate. I've seen this video you put up earlier and <laughs> like, I was worried for you. I was, I was worried for your safety. Um, it, it looked pretty pretty elite. Was that now? What was what was the actual plates? So for those listening and that didn't see Dice's story, it was a lap pull down with the plates hooked onto fuck knows what was it? Just a thick fishing line or what the fuck was that? Over no, something else in it. <laughs> I was worried. It, for it's it. It. So it's not at it's not at my joint. It's at one of our mates' places just down on the foreshore. And like the two of like two of my best mates, Scottish and Top Day. Um, throughout when I was up there FaceTiming them, they're like, you've got to see it. We've set up this unbelievable gym and whatever. I was like, rolled in there. And it was so funny. Like, it's literally homemade business. Like, Tom, Tom is, like, really handy with the tools and stuff. So he's whipped up this pulley system with a thick bit of cable and just some rope for some lap pull down. You've got the work. So it's very funny. 
Yeah. Unreal, mate. Yeah, Essen, Essendon's new training facility over the off-season. 100%, mate. You're not Get wrong. up your own hub. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, mate, well, appreciate you jumping on for, for a quick chat anyway, and hopefully the um, the league heals nice and quickly for you and you can get in some good work over the off-season. And, mate, fingers crossed for, for all of us that, um, that this – this shit clears up pretty soon and we can get have a bit more of a normal 2021 and see you back out there and, and see how we go. 100%. Thanks, Hayes, brother. Um, appreciate what you're doing and good luck with your recovery too. Cheers, Ledge. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in today. If you've enjoyed today's episode, uh, we'd love for you to take a screenshot of the show and post it up on your Instagram story for me. Tag myself, tag Dice. We'd love to get your feedback. Um, and again, mate, thanks for your time and we'll chat to you guys all again very soon. Beautiful.